two seconds. Thank you so much, sir. Ya Devi Sar Bhuteshu Bhuthi Rupen Sankhita Namastaste, 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 Namo Nama. With salutations to Ma Saraswati, let's begin today's national day seminar on feeding resilience, scope, and challenges for food technology. I, Dr. Gita Mehra, Head of the Department of Food Science, Mehra Chand Mahajan DAV College for Women, Women Chandigarh, take this opportunity to welcome our Honorable VC of Wales Institute of Science, Technology and Advanced Study, Professor S. Freeman Narayan. Due to certain unavoidable circumstances, uh, he is not with us, but he has sent his blessing for this event, for the success of this National Peace Seminar. We also have with us Dr. Nisha Bhargava, Principal Meher Chand Mahajan, DAV College for Women, Chandigarh. And we are really fortunate that in spite of her busy schedule and she's traveling, and in spite of that, she has taken this time a few minutes to be with us. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks a lot. And the best part, our chief guest for the occasion, Professor Anand Sharma, in charge, IPR cell and head, Department of Pharmaceutical Management, Naipur, he is with us. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Along with that, we have our distinguished speakers, Mr. K.P. Singh from Netherlands, Dr. Shalini Sehgal from Delhi University, Dr. A.K. Singh, from NDRI Karnal, Ms. Purva Rathi from Cognizant, Gurgaon, and Mr. Supinder Singh, DO, Food Safety, Duty Administration. And yes, the access of this event, our organizing secretary, Dr. B. Prakash, and his organizing team. He is Associate Professor and Head, Department of Biotechnology, Wales Institute of Science, technology and advanced study. Our organizing partners are Chandigarh Administration, NetProfan, Eat Right India, Central Board of NCVRD New Delhi. And most important, our dear participants, we welcome you from the core of our heart. Thank you so much for being with us. It is a matter of great pride that we have more than 400 registered participants from all over India, Chandigarh, Haryana, Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, New Delhi, Tamil Nadu, UP, MP, Karnataka, Uttarakhand, Chhattisgarh, Andhra Pradesh, Puducherry, Telangana, Rajasthan, Kerala, Bihar, beautiful national integration, isn't it? These participants are revered faculty members and they are able students of BSc, BTech, MSc, MTech, MPhil, PhD, and even students from class 12 to postdoc fellows. The participants from various disciplines like food technology, MFD, that is microbial and food technology, nutrition and dietetics, various vocational courses, biotechnology, and microbiology are to name a few. Today or every day in teaching learning it is always the focus is outcome based. What is the outcome? So on a, pro on a practical perspective if we see the question is what is the outcome that we are looking forward to through this national e-seminar. 
obviously it is participant centric to help them find answers to what when why where and how what discipline should we choose why should we choose that what is the future scope what are the skills imparted to these courses when and where to apply universities and educational institutes that are offering these courses how to qualify for these courses for this exam and after completing one cycle again the question repeats what next our expert speakers are from academic research industry and government agency obviously they'll try to quench your queries on a bigger perspective let's take this was a micro perspective self up growth now if we can go for societal growth let's take that so on a bigger perspective what about the hunger index of our country and of our world or disease and death burden due to malnutrition and unsafe food or the level of food wastage so can we as food technologists become the important link to create an akshay patra to achieve sustainable development goals of food and nutrition security and safety feeding the zillions what a wonderful purpose for life of life numerous illustrious examples can be seen like the concept of langar and especially during these uh, current covid pandemic time where even housewives and fpos they cook food for the sick and the needy and a special mention to a humble of a humble street food vendor mr sanjay rana from chandigarh in pms man ki baat for providing chole bhature to people going for vaccination against covid wonderful awareness generation on the part of a small entity and then something to learn from mumbai's dabba walas for achieving six sigma quality st- standard in their delivery process so what is the learning outcome yes the demand is there and the supply is also there so as food technologists can we bridge this demand and supply gap how recent technologies can help us in achieving farm to fork with zero food wastage and thus zero hunger let's deliberate let's deliberate to this national e seminar on feeding the zillions scope and challenges for food technologists and uh, now it is my earnest request that principal madam dr nisha bhargava starts this uh, e seminar with a welcome address for all the participants and her pearls of wisdom her blessings for us i hope ma'am you are here yes geeta good morning good morning a very good morning ma'am so just uh, a brief introduction madam is a member of punjab university senate since 2016 she is nac assessor at nac bangalore she is also member of state level quality assurance cell rusa she is member of state punjab university sports council member of punjab university college development council member of state legal services authority chandigarh administration so look at the diversity chairperson punjab university fencing member of uh, research advisory committee for department of economics punjab university then member of punjab university sports council member of pg board of studies in environment sciences as well as solid waste management member of board of studies of uh, various syllabus various departments member of governing bodies of various schools and colleges and obviously she has to her credit various research and uh, publications as well as research projects the best part is that all these research endeavors are focused towards social cause so a warm welcome to you ma'am 
Thank you so much for being here. All yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Geeta, for your kind words. And thank you for this wonderful beginning of this national webinar. Professor S. Shriman Narayanan, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Vistas Chennai. And our chief guest for today, Professor Anand Sharma, in charge, IPR cell, Naipal, Mr. K.P. Singh, Dr. Shalini Sankal, Dr. Ashish Kumar Singh, Ms. Purva Rakhi, Mr. Sukhvinder Singh, Dr. B. Prakash, Dr. Geeta Mehra, faculty members and participants, it is a matter of great pride for us to collaborate with the prestigious Wales Institute of Science, Technology and Advanced Studies, Chennai, for organizing a national seminar. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome the galaxy of guests today. I would like to share a short profile of our eminent institution that is Behar Chand Mahajan DAB College for Women. The college was established in the pious memory of Justice Behar Chand Mahajan, the third Chief Justice of India, who was also the Prime Minister of Kashmir. Currently, the college runs under the ages of the College Managing Committee, New Delhi and under the very able and pragmatic leadership of our Honorable President, Dr. Purpuri Padmuti, it is considered one of the best institutions for women education in this part of the country. Re-accredited with an A grade by NAC, the college had 207 Punjab University top 10 positions in the year 2018-19 and 160 top 10 positions of exit classes in 2019-20. Ours is the only institution in Chandigarh registered as a skill provider on National Skill Development Council portal Government of India. We rank first in the country in Swatch Campus Rankings 2018 under Residential College category, the college ranked third in the country under Swatch Surveyction 2019 City Campus Rankings under Citizen-led Initiative category, and we are also ranked amongst the topmost colleges in India by India Today magazine. We have won Punjab University Women's Trophy 39 times in our existence of 53 years and we are accorded star status by Department of Biotechnology, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India. The topic of today is of immense relevance as the entire food supply chain involves a number of activities and processes and it is everyone's concern that food should be produced and consumed in a sustainable manner. I would like to share with everyone present that our Department of Food Science is doing exemplary work by bringing laurels to the institution in the form of national awards and recognition under Swachita and food processing. I express my gratitude to Dr. Geeta Mehra for organizing this national level webinar. And I am sure that this will be useful for food technologists and policy makers who are incessantly working once again, I extend a welcome to English guests who have spared their valuable time to join this event. 
who has joined us from far and wide thank you very much ma'am thank you very much ma'am thank you so much for your kind words and i hope your presence itself inspires us that in spite of traveling i can see the beautiful scenery in the background and in spite of that you have made it possible to be here and as i can see i think uh, prakash sir we have the honor of having uh, vice chancellor sir as well from wales institute hello sir here good morning sir is this vice chancellor sir from uh, wales university chandigarh uh, chennai yes ma'am A uh, very good morning, sir. Most welcome. Good Thank morning, you so sir. much for being here. Good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. It's, good a, it's morning, an honor, sir. sir. It's an honor. Professor S. Shiman Narayan is here. Thank you so much, sir. We were looking forward to your presence. Presence. Extremely thankful, sir. And uh, I request you, without taking any more time, your uh, <laughs> your presence itself speaks a lot. And I request you to. Bless the event with your presence, sir. Thank you, Professor S. Shuman Narayan, Vice Chancellor, Wales Institute of Science, Technology, and Advanced Studies. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. And respected Professor Anand Sharma, the in charge of IP or cell, Naipur, Punjab. respected dr nisha bhargava principal merchant magazine dav college for women chandigarh respected dr geeta mehra the convener of this program respected dr b prakash organizing secretary of this program other experts who will be delivering lectures to the participants in this program the deans directors hods and faculty members of vista as well as dav college for women and my dear students of both institutions and my dear participants a very good morning to all of you i doubt that i congratulate both the organization the vista and the dav college for women for coming together to organize the much needed program on food technology i am really i am really happy to participate in this inaugural function as you all know very well that food is one of the essential component for life on earth for all lives particularly for human beings which is large in number i with increasing demand with the human population and with diminishing resources particularly the land which you need for food production it is going to be a challenge for the food technologies that how we are going to meet the needs of the human being and other lives on earth with sufficient food production when the data was small human could do all the calculations but over the years when the size of the data were going on so we have started using computers and the automation is the order of the day whether can we expect a similar trend in food technology also in the sense as the demand for food in is on the rise whether we can go for using the machine for the food production of course already in many areas machines have replaced the human being like plowing planting cutting separating polishing etc and etc so 
So nowadays, the laborers, the laborer force has also come down either because of the application of the machines or it could be the other way as we could not get sufficient labor force we have gone for using the machines. Recently, our country has not reported any deaths due to starvation which was some 50 years back or 100 years back. That means, in a way, we are self-sufficient in food production. But I am, I am not sure whether the same, same scenario will continue in the years to come as the population is always on the rise. So therefore, there is a need for planning well in advance. And we should concentrate not only on food production. Of course, even though we are able to produce a good amount of the materials for food, whether we have the facilities to preserve them without getting damaged or without undergoing any deterioration, etc., particularly for vegetables and fruits. So, therefore, I think the need of the hour is for the development of technology to preserve the food products that have been produced from or by different agriculturists. I hope this seminar will deliberate on those lines that how we are going to protect the food products that have been generated or given by our agriculturist so that it can be used or it can be kept for a longer time so that there is no scarcity of the food for the people. I once again wish all the best to both the institutions so which have come together for this collaborative program and I do believe that this program will be useful for all the participants and for their future work and endeavor. With this, wish you all the best and thank you very much for giving me an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks a lot. Please pardon me because I didn't wish to lose you to bad or poor network connectivity in case or to your official commitments. And we really craved and wanted your these blessings to start or initiate this uh, national e-seminar and so I directly uh, uh, requested you to give your views, your wisdom, your blessings for this seminar. Just give us a few moments so that I can read your CV for the benefit of the participants, sir. Uh, Professor S. Sriman Narayan is BC Wales Institute of Science, Technology and Advanced Studies. It is deemed to be university and uh, he is there since two years, more than two years, VC of this prestigious uh, university since September 2020. He, is, he was pro vice chancellor since uh, July 2019 and uh, he has been associated with the University of Madras for last 34 years. UGC BSR Faculty Fellow in Department of Analytical Chemistry since 2016 to, to, to June 2019. He has been Member Syndicate Committee since March 2016 to June 2016. He has been Member Syndicate since March 2014 to June 2016. He has been Professor and Head Department of Analytical Chemistry since July 2012 to June 2016. He has been Director, University of Madras since March 2015 to Feb 2016. He has also been Chairperson, School of Photonics and Nanoscience since uh, May 2010 to October 2012. What a journey, I must say. And he has been the director, National Center for Nanoscience and Technology, nanotechnology, the upcoming field, since March 2010 to October 2012. I'm sure all the organization must have progressed in leaps and bounds 
under your able guidance sir and professor he has been professor department of analytical chemistry since september 1998 to july 2012 he has been been research since august 2008 to july 2011 he has been reader department of analytical chemistry since september 1992 to september 1998 and we can say the initial phases of his journey has been as lecturer department of analytical chemistry since july 1985 to september 1992 he has been the visiting professor to national taipei university of technology taiwan that's great and uh, clemson university also as visiting faculty clemson south carolina united states he was there for almost 2 years as visiting faculty then also he was as an exchange visitor to humboldt university of berlin germany for a year since 1998 in 1998 and also he was senior scientific officer in indian institute of technology madras for 2 years since 1983 to from 1983 to 1985 and he has uh, done his phd in chemistry from iit madras in 1983 and master in analytical chemistry again from university of madras in 1979 and bsc chemistry from university and madras the university of madras in 19 77 what a beautiful journey sir thank you so much thank you so much for enlightening uh, the session this seminar with your presence thanks a lot sir and now i welcome our honorable chief guest for the occasion professor anand sharma associate dean academic affairs sniper he is professor department of pharmaceutical management and chairperson also of the same department naipur mohali and he is in charge ipr cell of naipur mohali his research interests are related to marketing problems and he is a research advisor for phd and masters thesis his academic qualification is phd mphil mcom post graduate diploma in marketing management post graduate diploma in computer application along with that certificate courses in ipr's and lb he has more than 28 years of teaching experience at university and various institutes level he has worked as academic coordinator as well as placement coordinator he has been an invited speaker and expert member in academic committee various academic committee he has published research papers articles chapters in journals magazines and books he has served at different academic and administrative bodies of kurukshetra university mim noida naipur mohali graphic era dehradun the other interesting assignments that he has handled are research and academic activities like marketing practices of export house which was a uh, udc sponsored research project along with that task paper on pharmaceutical policy that was submitted to cii along with that he has some consultancy assignments also like consultancy with respect to diversification of business for sk diagnostic tentacle rd gaps in the context of global strategy and plan of action on public health innovation and intellect intellectual property it is a who sponsored project gap analysis of product manufactured by pharmaceutical companies and us pharma pharmacopeia product offering and currently he is involved with a government of india project on accessibility and availability of nlem drug thank you so much sir for being here thanks a lot we welcome you and we are all ears to your presentation thank you so much
गुड मॉर्निंग प्रोफेसर एस श्रीमन नारायणन वाइस चांसलर विस्टा यूनिवर्सिटी चेन्नई डॉक्टर निशा भार्गवा प्रिंसिपल एम सी एम डी ए बी कॉलेज चंडीगढ़ थैंक यू डॉक्टर गीता मेहरा मैम फॉर योर काइंड वर्ड्स आई एम थैंकफुल टू द ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी ऑन दिस ओकेजन आई एम हैप्पी टू बी पार्ट ऑफ this webinar today i will be discussing ipr issues in food industry and you will get to know how iprs have changed the competitive scenario in food industry in the beginning i would briefly discuss some of the points which are relevant with reference to with reference to the food processing industry in india when it comes to the demand side demand for the food processing products they are growing very fast and they are going because the disposable income is increasing the urbanization is increasing young population has a tendency to move out and the family systems are changing from joint family systems to the nuclear family systems the demand is also changing because of the changing lifestyles pattern amongst the people when we look at the food industry as such now government of india is trying its level best to create facilities they are creating facilities on the basis of the resources what we have with us like we have abundant livestock we have a huge agriculture produce i know that on the basis of these resources we cannot compete we need to have some infrastructure over a period of time government of india has spent and they still are investing money in order to create the infrastructure so that the people those who are involved in the food industry can be helped when we look at the investment side now in last 5 6 years look at the cumulative investment which has been taken by the which has been done by the government of india through all the routes whether it is the investment of government or fdi investments the rules and regulations with respect to the creation of facilities they have been eased out and that will help the government in getting the attention of the fdi investors when i look at the policy support system now there is a good policy support system which has been created by the government in terms of automatic clearance of the fdis in terms of rationalization of tariffs and duty structure with respect to the food processing they have also created the national mission on food processing and some amendments have also been made in trade policy foreign trade policy in india in order to help the food industry to grow when we look at market indian market now you will be surprised to know that 70% of the total retail segment is still there in the unorganized sector now we have to see that how this can be changed or how the facilities can be created for these small retail players so that they can become big and convert themselves into the organized sector so that is another aspect which is there as a feature of the indian food industry then look at the contribution of the food processing industry it is expected that by 2024 
food industry is expected to employ around 9 million people in india so it has become one of the source of employing employment generation for the country now i will discuss the processing part with respect to the food in india now when we look at the food processing in india now because of the lack of infrastructure and lack of lack of support earlier the processing was at the minimum level but over a period of time it is growing and growing slowly but still there are some aspects like in case of foods vegetables poultry you will see there is a huge scope i'm not saying that scope is not there in case of dairy sector and marine products scope is there but still there the percentage of processing is still higher than the the fruits and vegetable sector and poultry sectors so we need to look at how the processing can be enhanced so that the wastage with respect to fruits and poultry can be reduced it is a challenge for us but with the support of the government with the support of the participants in the industry participation uh, we will be in, in the coming years and with the support of the infrastructure and the and the rules and regulation we will be able to enhance this processing aspect also but still after looking at this particular diagram we are able to see that there is a scope for enhancing the processing of food products now basically uh, i am a marketing student so i cannot stop myself without talking about the marketing aspect now whenever the competition or competitors they are supplying the product now they have to see that how different can be they can be there in the market that is they have to bring some revolution in their marketing strategy to remain there in the market and in when i say marketing strategy the prod, product itself is one of the important component the food industry has to see that what sort of value addition can be generated or added into the product so that it can be accepted by the consumers those who are going to use it so they have to producers have to go to the customers they have to understand their requirement and then they should supply the product in the marketplace there are number of sources from where they can get the information about the consumers there are number of facilities where they can get the product tested and then they are supplying the product in the marketplace now when we look at the indian market you will see the competition in the fast food industry is growing the position of the current market is totally different from the position when we started our open policies that is the lpg policies you all must have seen the advertisements of licious which brand which is nowadays been promoted by the film personalities now this brand is simply selling the non vegetarian items in the marketplace but look how they are positioning their product how they are trying to attract the customers towards their product so their main emphasis on the freshness of the product their main emphasis on the the fast delivery with which they are able to serve the customers and the most important aspect is they are also emphasizing on the quality of the product when i when maybe in some of the advertise ad copies you may have noticed that they are talking about that the size of the meat is also going to be same throughout the packaging so that is something which is important in case of food industry when we talk about the quality of the products 
no as far as indian market is concerned they are also using technology to produce the product to supply the product to the consumers because the suppliers they earlier had faced the problem of shelf life that is the shelf life of their products were lower but because of the technical innovations now they are able to increase the shelf life up to 6 months for a product like amul is selling the the milk in tetra packs and there are other companies like tomato puree is being supplied in the marketplace in tetra packs and these tetra packs are able to maintain or retain the texture taste of the product and this is supporting the industry in terms of competing in the marketplace similarly you must have observed that indian market is flooded with different kind of products there are products where which are essential and which are used in our kitchen like that garlic ginger paste is there half cooked chapatis are available tamarind paste is there similarly the pakoda mix is also available in the marketplace so all these kind of different variants are available and these are all products which we are using but earlier i think before 80s these products were available at some local level but now look at the availability of these products at a national level marketing has played a significant role in terms of growing these products i'm not talk, talking simply about marketing i'm talking about the trademarks which are being used by the companies like ginger garlic paste from dabar tata is supplying different kind of varieties with the brand name of tata sampann mtr is also supplying dabar is supplying tamarind all these products they are being sold in the market with the trademark and trademark is one of the important component of ips now if you look at <coughs> competition in the marketplace the companies in the market they are supplying or they are not leaving any space in the market with which they cannot meet the expectations of the customers look at tata sampan products they are there into ready to food item they are there into the unpolished kind of product but they are supplying and they are supplying with intention that whatever product they are supplying that is they are nourishing in nature and it is they are all good for the health of the people now when we look at the food industry particularly cooking aspect no cooking is an art so one needs ipr protection to protect this art as far as food industry is concerned there are different kind of iprs which are relevant so these iprs are patent copyrights trademarks trade secrets design rights geographical in indication now these are the six elements in ipr which are playing a significant role and you will see that the companies they are using these elements to compete in the marketplace so i will discuss one by one all these now first i will talk about the patent now patent is a right given by the government to the inventor of a product 
and there are certain conditions for giving this right now these are the four requisites which are more relevant in case of food industry these requisites are number 1 is the invention whatever you are trying to claim it should not be obvious this means that a regular person a chef could not look at the same composition of matter and create the same food or a recipe without the help so there is, should be something new newness should be there then there should be an originality anything which is previously invented will not get a patent so the same is true with in case of food and recipes and in in the field of food industry it is tough thing to prove the originality because anybody can come up and say that this kind of product is used by me way back so it is a challengeable kind of thing but when you are involved in developing the technologies with respect to the product then you will see that the companies are able to get the patent there are number of patents which are related to the food technologies machineries which are there then next is the invention it must it must have some value an invention with no purpose is useless in the eyes of law it must be useful for the benefit of the society or for the industry that sort of utility should be there of the innovation and the fourth one is an additional step is the full disclosure is required that is all the steps which are used for producing the product they must be disclosed now these are the four the general kind of requirements with respect to the patent now when we look at the patents in case of food industry look at the areas for which the patents are granted they are granted for food composition that is any new composition which you are able to develop you are able to get the patent any process or any method which you have developed which earlier was not there for producing the product that will get a patent any novel microorganism plant or animal that has been genetically modified to produce a particular chemical is going to get a patent any new substitution which you have used for the purpose of producing the product or an apparatus for making it or testing a composition that is going to get the patent all bioactive compound compounds which are used in food processing will be getting the patent any machines for making the foods will get a patent any packaging material which is new any methodology which is new in for packaging will also get a patent now so there are almost eight kind of patents which are granted now when we look at the kfc now look at they 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 got the patent in food preheating cooking and warming device they 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 got a patent for chicken frying equipment they got a patent for pressurized cooking systems then they got the patent for deep heat fat frying equipment and method of use now these are the different things and these were whenever the patent was filed these were the new things so the company was able to get a patent now patent basically gives you an edge in the marketplace you own that property and you don't allow the others to compete with you 
So, when I say patents, there are eight mechanisms in which you are going to get the patent. Now, I'm talking about the strategies for taking the patents. You can, like, after changing the shape of the product, you can get a patent in terms of design. You, when you say a new combination, creating a combination which nobody has developed, like Peter uh, peanut butter and jelly combination is a new combination, combination and got the patent. When you are in improving the flavor of the product, when you are interested in improving the texture of the product, when you are increasing the shelf life of the product, when you say that my product is more healthier, then also you are going to get the patent, but you have to give a proof of that. When you say that I, you are able to, uh, you are doing something with, for, with which you are, it is easier to cook, that also give you a patent. Or when a new use has been defined with respect to the existing product, then also you are going to get a patent. So these are the different kind of strategies which are being used in order to get the patent in these areas. Of course, in the marketplace, there have been some weird kind of innovations and they also have earned a patent. Like for example, we all know that fats and eggs, they are good and they are delicious also. But when it comes to the marketplace in the current market, we see that the people are becoming more health conscious. So inventors are taking certain steps. So what they are doing is they are finding the new ways to swap out the unhealthy parts of the ingredients without sacrificing the flavor. But this is a tough task. How you are going to uh, take out those elements and maintain the flavor of the product. Though it is difficult, but still people are able to do, so you can get a patent for that. Similarly, when you look at jelly and peanut butter food slice, now that is something which nobody has ever expected. A person has developed a new combination of product and this combination since it was new, so it got the patent from the government. Then comes the trademark. Now trademark is another tool by which you can compete in the marketplace. Now, a simple definition of trademark says that it is a word, a symbol, logo or a combination which help in identifying or differentiating the product or services in the marketplace. And when it comes to the trademark, and when we look at the current market scenario, it is the trademark which is creating market for the food industry. For trademark registration, you need to find a logo, you need to find a word or a symbol, and that word that logo should be unique. It should not be common in nature. If you are going to give a common name to a person, it is not going to be registered because it cannot be differentiated from the others. When we look at the Indian market, look at Amul. Now, whenever we talk about Amul, we get some impression. Impression of quality, impression of freshness, impression of a taste. No, that is something which is making the product unique. Recently, during COVID period, there was a case which has happened in the Indian market. And this case is basically related with Red Bull versus Bakewell Biscuits Private Limited. Now, Red Bull is a well-known brand in the marketplace. It is a brand which is related to the energy drink. This 
brand has filed a suit against Bakewell Biscuits for the infringements of its trademark Red Bull. Now, question is why the people they file a case? The people are filing a case because their trademark image is being affected negatively. Or it is presented in a different way, which is harming the interest of the party. So Red Bull, it possesses a trademark, internationally renowned, well-known maker of the energy drinks. It has worked very hard for creating the brand equity in the marketplace. But the makers of the biscuit, that is the Bakewell biscuits, they have used this trademark the same kind of trademark which Red Bull is using. Now look at this. Red Bull is basically using two bulls, red horses. Sorry. Uh, red Bull is using this the picture for the purpose of promoting the product. It is a bull which is being shown as an insignia of the product. But on the other hand, when it comes to the Bakewell biscuits, they use red horses with the same, same sort of color combination. The font size, the marks, they were identical. And that has affected the interest of Red Bull. Look at the two kind of marks which are being used. This is one mark, this is another mark. So, the company went to the court, asked for the injunction and on May 21st, an ex party in term Injunction was granted to the company that is Bakewell was stopped from using this insignia for promoting the product. So timely following up the intellectual property right is a way through which one can safeguard themselves. Red Bull did it the right thing notwithstanding the pending situation and they took the measures to secure misuse of their registered trademarks. So in, in case of competitive scenario, one has to be very careful with respect to these kind of things also. Is there anybody who is using your trademark and trying to spoil your image in the marketplace? That has to be looked at. Similarly, there was a case of ITC Limited versus India Nestle, Nestle India. Now, look at this case. Now, here the plaintiff is ITC Limited. They alleged that the defendant Nestle India has infringed their trademarks. Plaintiff said, that is ITC said that Nestle India Limited has launched a new product, Maggie Extra Delicious Magic Masala, which is an infringing trademark of ITC's limited product, Sunfeast Yippie Noodle, which contains Magic Masala. They filed a case, but because of some generic values, uh, generic aspect of the words, the company was not given the injection. That is, Maggie was allowed to use that word. So, question is, what sort of word you are using? That has to be seen. If it is different word, or a, sorry, a generic word, or similar kind of word, then it is difficult for the court also to decide the case, decide in the sense that they will say that it is a generic word, so there is no distinction. 
and when the distinctions are not there then they both will be allowed to use the same kind of word uh, and same same kind of words basically to promote the product then comes copyright now copyright is an exclusive protection granted to creators for their work in food industry copyrights are difficult to obtain as it is difficult to prove that who is the first originator creator therefore recipes do not have copyright protection but cookbooks digital contents can have a copyright protection Well, there is an interesting case in United States, where a lady Elizabeth Labow, she has filed a case against the Food Network for infringing the material. Now, what happened in this case? The lady was basically has developed the snowball cupcakes. Now, that was a kind of new thing which she has developed. so she did a mistake that she has not applied for the patent for this kind of product but what she was doing is she published this recipe in 2014 viraled it in 2015 and also released a video on this platform sugar hero platform for the purpose of communicating to the audience and all of a sudden she noticed that the the content which she was circulated was also used by food network for promoting the products in their websites so she went to the court filed a case against network Uh, food network people she said that they have copied the material from the website and now they are showing it and using it for their benefit now under section 102 of the copyright act explicitly states that copyrights do not protect any idea procedure process stem method operation concept principle or discovery regardless of the form in which it is described explained illustrated embodied such work so this cannot be protected we cannot give you any advantage of that no had she protected the mechanism of producing this these snow global cup cupcakes no she could have got the patent but she has not applied for the patent she has applied for the she has uh, filed a case for protecting from the we can say from publishing that material by the other party the court has not given any benefit to her then comes trade secret not trade secret in the food industries are becoming an important tool to compete survive and survive for a longer period of time in the food industry trade secret is a knowledge and this knowledge is unknown it is not shared so main advantage of trade secret is they do not expire like patents expire there is only one disadvantage with trade secret is that is they can be lost and once you are able to lost it then you cannot reclaim that that has also happened in the history there are number of products which are competing in the marketplace on the basis of this particular aspect of the ipr that is trade secret look at the kfc look at roofza look at coca cola all are able to survive because they have a unique combination unique formula for their products and they are not sharing that formula now look at coca cola that they started selling this product 
in 1886 but till 1990 they were just using it and maybe communicating to the employees but later on in 1990 they decided to take control of the thing they they basically went for the trade secret and since then it is their property they they have not shared with others another example is kentucky fried chicken it is developed by its founder kfc's original recipe is locked in a 770 pound high tech safe within a vault with 2 feet thick concrete walls you know look at the kind of security which has been done in order to protect the trade secret or you can say the recipe for the product now mcdonald is another example particularly talk about the mcdonald special sauces of they are they have a recipe with respect to the special sauce but they do not enjoy the trade secrets status now because it had protected initially in somehow they were not able to maintain the security of the trade secret it went out then again they got back but now it is not a trade secret it can be copied and it can be used by others also so it is very important to maintain the trade secrets with respect to the pharmaceutical uh, with respect to the food industry for example there 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 can be number of situations when people working in the organization they can create problem so one has to be very careful with respect to the trade secrets a company manufactures a commercial oven the company's chief technology engineer is hired by your competitor and after some time the competitor is launch launched the same kind of product so that is going to create a problem for you similarly a salesman is giving you an idea about the previous employer's product the confidentiality with respect to their customers so they can take away your pro, um, market share or customers so it is very necessary that these trade secrets should be protected company should take certain steps in order to protect the trade secrets now when it comes to the employees how you can maintain the trade secrets now it is always better to promote the employee loyalty that is give them incentives and other advantages so that they can be loyal towards you they do not share the things which are happening in the organization you should monitor the employees activities regularly nowadays more rules and regulations are being used to protect the trade secrets so do you draft a comprehensive secret policy with workers similarly try to enforce that those rules and regulation by way of signing the confidentiality agreements with the employees now in this way you can protect but question is these trade secrets they should not be discussed in open if they are going to be discussed in open then they are going to hurt the business then comes the design rights now design rights apply to the exterior appearance of the product so what is the exterior appearance that is shape pattern configuration of a product or its parts granting the holder the right to make sell and use it and in order to get a design right 
you have to have satisfied these kind of condition that is the design should be fresh new or original it should be applicable to the article it should not be non obvious it should be non obvious it should not be obvious in nature and there should not be any earlier disclosure of such design we have seen that there were there are various <laughs> products <laughs> which have a unique <laughs> kind of design <laughs> and the people are attracted <laughs> toward this product because of the design designs are able to get the attention of the people look at this biscuit oreo biscuit i think since 1918 they have the same kind of design on the product they have not changed it because the people like it the product is identified by this particular design in the current market no the this paper boat products they are supplying the juice in the marketplace now look at the different aspect it is a flexible spout pouch with a unique shape the brand uses matte colors on a white background to represent the content of the products the graphics the package graphic include an illustration of the primary food or content of the pack Now, all these things they are making the product unique so you have to see in case of market place there are number of things which are being considered by the consumers while purchasing the product and if you are able to develop and supply the product in a unique wrapper or a packet it will automatically get an attention maybe you have seen the colgate toothpaste a glossy kind of wrapper is nowadays being used this glossy wrapper is used because they are using the senses of the people they are forcing the customers to have a look on the product and the people are because nowadays senses marketing is also being used in the marketplace so the companies are using senses uh, different uh, you can say aspects to create an impact on the senses of the consumers and lastly the geographical indication this is another tool or you can say it is an ipr aspect with respect to the product geographical indication is basically giving an advantage to the producer of the product that the product which he or she is selling it belongs to a particular area now the important thing with respect to the geographical indication certificate is that it is normally used to the associations of the producers not to the individual person right so if you want to have an gi advantage try to make the association of the producer of the same kind of product and get the benefit from the garden no agriculture and fruit products have long been associated with the unique characteristics and heritage aspects affiliated to with the location of the origin geographical names have been used to identify the product to identify the quality of the product now you all have uh consumed agra ka petha tirupati laddu hyderabadi biryani now all these are showing the relation with the place and that place because at that they are producing the product under certain circumstances that those circumstances may not be there at other geographical locations 
environment is different the contents which are being used the raw material which are being sourced they are totally different so the taste are going to be different look at this diagram it is a diagram where the six can six associations they have asked for the gi advantage so government has given them it is assam tree darjeeling tree nilgiri orthodox duwar steri nilgiri ctc tree all these are the gi indication which are given to the associations so in case of food industry now these six aspects of ipr they are becoming important so being a marketing student i would still say that use make use of the trademarks make use of the geographical indications make use of the packaging make use of the design in order to get the attention of the people i'm not saying that do not go for the patenting of the product you can go for the patenting of the product but for that you have to be very innovative if you are not innovative you are not going to get the patent once you are sure that you are the thing which you are producing the taste which you have developed that is new it is not there in the marketplace then you will get a recognition so with respect to the taste and preferences it is more difficult to get the patent as compared to the technical innovations so uh, so this is what i wanted to share with you thank you all thank you very much sir thanks a lot for this wonderful session with all the examples and practical aspects i must say that it is going to be very useful for the students when they are studying that it is not just in the textbook that they have to learn things they have to go in the market and see what is actually happening see the label see the brands see the content and see what is happening actually behind those beautiful labels also it's a really an eye opener and it sets the tone for rest of our uh, uh, national seminar on uh, this topic and thank you so much sir we can't thank you enough for this uh, wonderful enlightening session thank you so much thank and you ma'am if there are any queries from the uh, participants they may write to us they may email us they may write it in the chat box and these can be further shared with professor anand sharma and as i must say that uh, he and his team they are always there for us always helping us guiding us mentoring us in each and every way thank you thank so you. much sir. thank you thank you thank you so i am leaving ma'am thank you sir thank you so much uh and now next is the, our next speaker we are ready for the also mr k p singh uh prakash sir just check i hope yes sir has yes, joined sir. thank you so much sir thanks a lot yes sir. wonderful to see here so just a brief introduction to a person who needs actually no introduction mr k p singh he is in this food technology field for more than 28 years and he is a professional with uh, so many years of diversified plant supply chain management strategic management manufacturing operations excellence quality health process and safety in fmcg food processing industry with international experience of over 8 years currently he is working as gm process engineer with chocolate ingredient division of olam cocoa pv netherlands and he has been with olam international limited since 
and worked in Africa, USA, and Europe in different roles. He has also worked for Cadbury India Limited, now it is known as Mondelez, in India uh, since March 19 to September 2011. And he has also worked in different agro and food processing industries in India from June 91 to July 99. The academic credentials, the best part is that uh, he is an alumnus of uh, prestigious Govind Vallapan University of Agriculture and Technology, Pannagar. Currently, it is in Uttarakhand. Earlier, it was in UP. So, he did his MSc Food Technology from there. He has master's diploma in management and he is a certified black belt in lean and six sigma from UBD, Netherlands. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation, sir. Thank you so much for being with us. We are eager to learn from you. All yours, sir. Uh, thank you, Gita. Gita, one question is that uh, who are the target audience for this? Uh, Sure, sir. I think uh, due to certain reasons, you have uh, not been able to join our uh, inaugural session. So here I would like to mention that we have more than 486 registered participants from all over India, from different states of India. These are uh, BSc, BTEC, MSc, MTEC, MPhil, PhD students, even postdoc fellows, and even some class 12 students. The purpose is to know that what is the scope of food technology and what is expected from them. Okay. Uh, let me try to bring my presentation up. How to do it, Gita? I am not able to actually get it. Uh, so, you can share your slides. Do you have your slides, sir? Just a minute, I'm trying, but uh, we have to share yeah. the screen, change, caption. Sir, you may please uh, guide step by step to... Can you guide to that how to do it? Because I'm not comfortable doing it. Prakash sir, please guide step by step. Sir, sir, sir in, uh, in the last row you may get, you may see the uh, arrow mark. Uh, in the hand, uh, in, the, in the hand symbol is the uh, right hand. The nearby, it's very nearby, the arrow mark is there. Up, lift arrow mark. Yes, 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 is there. Yeah, you just click that arrow mark. And you can share your screen, entire screen or a window, the specific window. You can select a window or tab. You can select the window. If you have choose the window, means the window. Yeah, yeah, a window. Yeah. Then you can see okay, okay. Uh, the yes, now. Now. I I hope that I yeah, you select. Yes, I hope. Thank you, sir. Great, great. So, uh, Gita has given my introduction, so I don't think that I should uh, dwell upon it. So currently, I am working with uh, Oram International Limited, uh, which is a food ingredient company and hosted at uh, Netherlands uh, in this one. So my topic actually has been given that what is the industrial perspective for the food technologist or rather say I would try to leave all the students. It is more for the students than uh, for the uh, teachers or research uh, people. Uh, I would like them to leave with the thought that uh, generally which career they should choose uh, in the industries. Okay, so before I go to the main topic, it is very important to understand that what are the emerging trends of the food uh, right now, which is happening all over the world. And uh, you will agree with me that uh, this uh, internet is a great flat out in this. You see in any corner of the world, you will see the same kind of the trends emerging, especially in the youth and the generation Y and generation X. So, it is almost flat out, the same kind of the thought process is going. The world is undergoing a huge change in their mindset, in their product, in their uh, technology, everything. So, uh, whatever I could uh, 
pick up is uh, generally the trends which we are now having from what we have going forward and especially uh, in view of this covid pandemic things have undergone a very sea change that we can see so uh, among the trends uh, one of the trend is the sustainable nutrition and uh, now people want more of the nutrition means the health consciousness and how it can be sustained through the various food means it could be the biological food organic food or the specific nutritious foods so now people are uh, more uh, aware of it internet is giving them the information that how they should choose their nutrition so uh, it is really a trend which is going to stay for long as the education awareness training of the people increasing people are able to now differentiate between the junk food between the functional food or the food which they require for their uh, particular health so in the specific if any person is more into the gym kind of the business or more into the modeling business or another so now we can choose the specific diet and how it can be sustained through that nutrition is very important so that is one part the second is the proactive health proactive health means now people are more aware of their health that how to maintain the health what kind of the nutrition to maintain the health is more important at the at the different life stages for example as the as we increase or advance in the age then we need more of the protein more of the vitamins minerals so that ability to understand those things uh, at the different life stages is now slowly creeping into the mind of the people and they are trying to get into it then the current buzzword is the humanity so there are claims counter claims and all that is for the immunity but definitely we need the food which can increase our immunity in this time of the pandemic plant power is basically for the vegetarianism people are going for the vegetarian diets in the world over though india tops the list with 30% vegetarian people but i have noticed it that in much of the europe and american countries especially the developed ones now more and more people are going for the plant i don't say that they are completely turning into the vegan but yes the trend is that if they are eat, they used to eat the meat every day in the month or every day in a week now they are skipping few days within that so that is how this uh, plant food is coming into the picture people are now more aware of the benefits of the plant uh, here i am not talking about the animal activist or other things but it is basically taking into view the health benefits so people are more turning to the plant side then mood and uh, mental wellness is really a trend everywhere that people want to go to the coffee shops people want to go to the tea joints coffee joints wine joints so that is where we can see that uh, we feel that uh, this entire ecosystem within that uh, complement the food which we have then transparency for trust it is a very important because people are now going to understand that what is the traceable even uh, that uh, from uh, for to the table people are wanting it so the traceability is very important even to the extent that they want that which farm farm it has come from and now we have also seen in the branding that a particular papaya has come from the chadda farm or it has come from that farm so this is from madhya pradesh so that transparency are people looking at and really speaking i work in the uh, chocolate and grind factory where coco is the main ingredient and now we are able to do the 100% traceability up to the farm level we can say you through the system that which farm it has come from in terms of the traceability next is that uh, during the aging now uh, people want to maintain the health they want to be proactive they want to go around the world they don't want to live a life where uh, we say that the people are old they want to live their life as the young to the extent they can live then there is a specific trend for digestive foods for the health 
now people understand the difference between the junk food and the food which is good for their health which is easily digestible so that trend is there then uh, protein for sustainability and health now people understand the components of the protein the amino acids which food is more uh, rich in the which kind of the amino acid and which is the better one which is the deficient food where we should have the supplemental things so that is also there and uh, the last is uh, but not the least is the sugar so generally earlier the trend was trend has gone from the natural to the refined sugars now it is turning back and even people are going for the kind of sugar which doesn't have any calorific value do we can always debate about the benefit and uh, not so benefits uh, in this sugars but it is the trend now people talk about it even the uh, lemon type of people also go for the sugars which doesn't have any calorie so why i uh, captured this slide is just to understand if the trends are changing we as the industrial people we as the research people have to keep pace with the demand of the product therefore we are always uh, expected to maintain this innovative expectations which the customer have from us and uh, it is one of the criteria that we as a food technologist what how much and where we can contribute in this entire thing okay so now uh, get to the next slide uh, this is very important it is the requirements which are fast changing in the systems of the food so uh, i have written here that it is the vuca world where now you see that the volatility is there and the food sector there are uncertainties we do not know who will disrupt the business who will bring the new idea and convert this idea into a great business we say now that the world is complex complex especially for the people who are not keeping pace with the technology so it becomes a very complex world and it is ambiguous not very clear we do not know that which company will become the next apple of this world who is working in the garage and trying to convert the idea into the business so completely this book about completely means that it is a fast changing things and we need to understand it very clearly so some of the points which i will cover uh, in this is a uh, uh, written on this slide is the food security food security simply means we have to keep keep pace with the burgeoning burgeoning population around the world that we are able to produce the food to the extent that the people can have it this is uh, one part but the second part is it is not only the food but it is the nutrition which should get to the people's plate which is much more important and it is fast changing the way it is a complete unbridged gap between the developed and the undeveloped nations i have seen both with my own eyes that all the developed nations they have the food excess food surplus but at the same time many of the countries in africa they are passing through the food scarcity so to make available the food to everyone everywhere to the human beings is a very very important and it's challenging things especially to the food technologists and especially to those working in the post harvest technologies where we need to actually save the waste or reduce the waste because waste is a huge problem in developing and the undeveloped world that whatever we produce goes waste because of the infrastructure issues because of the awareness issues and because of the issues which is beyond the hand of the farmers or the government so that is one thing that how to bring the low cost technology to secure the food for the entire humanity is a very important thing now the second is the food defense i would not say that it is the new field 
but it is relatively new field because i can uh, relate this with my own experience when i started my job in 90s then we even did not uh, listen the name of the food defense but food defense is actually against the intentional infringement in the food so therefore that requirement has come that during the entire supply chain how do we defend our food that it is always safe to eat and it is a very important area right now that in the entire supply chain how can we make sure that the food which we are producing which we are processing which we are distributing which we are taking to the customer how can we do it against the intentional uh, motives of uh, very few percentage of the people food safety is a very emerging uh, field and i have seen it ki when i started by in the all points i can see and i can tell you from my experience that when i started in 90s i hardly heard uh, some of these uh, texts that uh, and food safety is one of them i don't say then then the food was not safe but slowly the people have realized the as the people are going more into the convenience food more into the packaged foods so it uh, becomes even more important that how do we go about the safety of the food and it is a fast emerging field the requirements are changing very very fast for example if i tell you that if i say the food safety generally people go with the quality management system and with the hesap kind of thing but even within the them we have built in we have brought in the system we are changing them but still more changes are required for example even for the small things it is very difficult to take the decisions for example whether we should take the food into the manufacturing area or not it is still a hotly debated issue that whether it is safe to bring it or it is not safe to bring it whether it can uh, give us the microbiological headache or it can give us the other headaches so those kind of the small small practical things are still in the developmental stage where we don't have the very clear answers and people are coming to terms people are trying to change the systems people are uh, more into finding the solution to these practical problems so food safety is not a new thing but it is a powerful emerging field where lot of things has been developed but lot needs to be done in this then quality in itself is a big subject and as a food technologist we can understand that how important it is and if i tell you that all the four or even the fifth thing comes into now the quality umbrella which is the quality management system and the food safety management system even the traceability in this is the part of that so now quality is becoming more and more relevant field once it was very neglected generally the manufacturing people hardly gave credence to the quality people thinking that they are the overheads on the plant but now uh, this quality uh, as a department is taking precedence over the other departments quality does not mean only in the manufacturing area but it is very important in the entire supply chain which i will cover in the next slide the next is the taste and the convenience it is very important you cannot actually tinker with the taste of the people it with different taste but when it comes to their local taste probably in the entire world hardly any locality in the world is able to cope with this so you cannot tinker with the taste at the same time people want the more convenience in their package so means you can create a very good good food you can create a very tasty food but unless it is not very convenient to the people to eat it is very difficult that we can sell it so this convenience is very important you can actually relate yourself with many of the brands now we have maggi is a not so healthy food i'm sorry if somebody is hurt but still because it is convenient to cook so in certain sections of the society in the entire world this kind of the noodle is very very prevalent very very popular because it gives the convenience to the customer or to the consumer that is also very important 
now comes the food cost so costing is very important that we have to now uh, we are under the uh, say that uh, pressure to actually develop the food which is not only convenient tasty safe but that should be uh, with a low cost affordable to the society affordable to the people and which caters to the broad spectrum of the people so that is uh, also very important and it is changing very fast that uh, people are disrupting the businesses through the costing so uh, in for some of the companies specifically this food cost costing low cost has become the mode their brand that they can produce this they can sell it at the lowest cost and then they can earn the profit and they can continue in the business so continue to be in the to be continued in the business is a very 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 uncertain things right now then food and the nutrition because of the awareness and uh, because of the internet technology now people are actually have the access to the food access to the nutrition so not only people want the food but they want the nutritional food with the taste convenience quality and safety so this is this is also changing very fast in some of the one you cannot claim what you don't have that is where this food labeling is also very important though you will find food labeling is very ambiguous in many of the regions you must have seen that in many of the food drinks especially the fruit drinks they will say that it contains no added sugar but when you drink it you will find it is too sweet so that is where they will find the way to add the sugar something from the natural sources and then claim that it doesn't contain the sugar so rather than saying that what is the percentage of the sugar or they may write also but it would be in a very small letters big letters would be no it contains no added sugar so labeling could be sometimes hugely misrepresenting therefore uh, whenever we buy the food it is very important that we check it and also i will tell you that uh, people actually use the rework or reprocess the things so on the label when it comes to the best before or the expiry date they will write it the way they will manufacture the product but they will never say that how old is the rework or reprocessed thing they have used in the system so food labeling to an extent is very very ambiguous it doesn't capture anything therefore we need to be more careful not only in reading but in understanding the labeling then uh, based on this geographical regulations are changing very fast in uh, each of the developed world developing world or undeveloped world you will find the different regulations with developed world taking the lead into it for example developed world now have the access to all the medical informations by which they use it as in the policy framework and then they actually then change their regulations so geographically you will find a huge differences huge variations that how the regulations are being framed therefore it is also a very fast change and then uh, one is the specific diet so now you can have the access to it that uh, now even in the brand now people say that it is for the diabetic people it is for the sportsman it is for the person who is uh, afflicting with a certain disease so now from the general food people are able to differentiate the specific diets for specific requirements so these are some of the fast changing requirement uh, in the entire society and as an industry person as a technical person as a food professional we have to keep pace with them otherwise somebody else will disrupt it and business continuation will become a very difficult problem so where uh, how can we address this issue is that we have to actually keep pace with the rapid technological developments and with the fast communication then we have to react it very fast and we have to actually intervene in our entire system process machine and equipment technologically to meet those requirements 
and i tell you that this generation y which were the millennials were very very fast in understanding the things but now the generation which is generation z with all the technological things they are not only fast but they are furious also and they want things at the blink of the eye so that is very important to understand then changes needs to be inculcated so for the industry actually it is very challenging that we have different stakeholders right from the origins of the material or raw material to the conversion process uh, to the distributor to the customer we have a big chain therefore in all the stakeholders if any small change is done it has to be communicated fast to keep peace with this uh, changes therefore it is uh, very 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 important that as a food technologist food professional we keep ourselves updated on this okay so now is actually i have uh, tried to capture in this slide that how does the industrial environment work and how it is interdependent with each other and as a food professional how can we choose our career options or i would rather say that how can we see our role that in different departments how much value we can add this is this is very important slide especially for the budding food technologist to decide their career choices okay so the one which you see in the middle is a big uh, circle where i have written the word conversion so this conversion is basically the manufacturing process which converts the inputs and brings in the output so on the left hand is what are the inputs required for this conversion and on the right side is the uh, further supply chain that where the output how it goes and how the things are interdependent so if you look at it in the entire thing so in the conversion first we have to actually have the project project in the sense that the manufacturing project with all the manufacturing facilities with the machines manpower the process and everything and utilities because we have to create the conditions for the conversion which is the process conditions there to convert uh, everything into the output so for that we start with the project and project is actually supported by the r&d and some of the capable technical persons in the projects to understand that how to convert this idea into a physical structure where, where we can have the conversion so the basic r&d helps the project person to define the process engineering the process standardization the process optimization to set up the entire plant and to understand the process uh, uh, parameters we have to have the relevant utilities for it so therefore when we have done then during the conversion process comes the quality and food safety professionals they also help in the entire uh, supply chain back end supply chain and then the processes where we do the process engineering process standardization within the manufacturing process with a view to actually capture the highest uh, level efficiency then the consistency because manufacturing is the repeatability of the same operations all the time to convert this into a consistent product then right timing because for every product we have the shelf life therefore taking it to the customer as fresh as it is possible is very important and then at the right cost level because business always ask for the profit if we don't have the right costing we cannot run the profit and business cannot continue so therefore in this entire conversion process all the colors where it is kind of uh, this uh, yellowish it's basically we can see the role of the food technologist food technologist can work in r&d pdi the product development and innovation which is more related with the customers in terms of the feedback loop and with the sales and marketing again in terms of the feedback loop 
So you have seen that the different uh, networking here, that how the feedback loop is completed to uh, basically distribute the consistent product. So here the role of the food technologist is either they could be in the basic R&D structure, some of them can support the projects. Raw material is the part of the supply chain, hence it comes under the purview of the quality and food safety. Because quality actually nowadays in the entire supply chain it starts with the raw material. We have the uniformity in the raw material, we have the uniformity in the process, then we can expect the same repeatable product all the time at the lowest cost. Because if any product is rejected, if there is a product recall, product withdrawal, then it is usually not only usually costly, but it impacts the sales and marketing and it impacts the taste to the customer also. So product withdrawal simply means that the business is half dead, unless then we do something extraordinary to then revive the business. So therefore maintaining this standards of the quality and food safety in the entire supply chain is very, very important. Hence, as a food professional, we have to see our role that where we can add value in the entire supply chain. As a food professional, we may have the different interest. We may be having the proud to go into the R&D or in the PTI. Or we are more uh, oriented towards the projects and technical things or in the quality or this PDI nowadays has become the part actually of the good marketing strategy that they have some of the technical people that take them with the to the customer to understand their requirement at the end so that the product can be adjusted accordingly. Therefore, PDI is a very important uh, function right now which works in tandem not only with the sales and marketing and directly with the customer but it has become a now candidate to take the feedback to the manufacturing and to all the back-end processes to understand that how can we produce to the demand of the customer, which is very important. So as a food professional, we now have to see that where we can add value, what is our mental setup and how can we go. So this decision has to be taken when we are in the initial part of the job or when we are uh, even uh, during their studentship that how can we go, which department is better. Generally, we should look from the perspective of value addition rather than seeing as the career growth because if we are able to add more value to the business, then career growth will follow. So we should check our heart, we should check our mind that where we can add more value to the system. Because business is directly proportional to what value addition we do. Not only we do the valuation, but we must be able to communicate it to the right people, what we are doing. So that is also very, very important. So to my experience, that the career growth basically for the people who are working in the front end of the business is more visible than the back end of the business. Because any top management is more concerned with the front end uh, processes of the business which satisfy the customer. Therefore, this PDI and technical people in the sales and marketing, they play a huge role in taking forward the business, whereas the people in the backend side, which are working with the basic R&D things, which are working in the projects or which are working in the manufacturing, they are actually the backend business people and they have very relatively less visibility to the top management unless you yourself is a very good communicator to the people. Uh, for your part of the value addition which you have done to the system. So that is also uh, something the students and these people, new, new fresh people in the job needs to understand it. As far as the quality and food safety system is concerned, it is now the integral part of the entire supply chain right from the origination where we get the, because right now in any of the food business, we, own, we are not just dependent upon the local procurement. Rather now it is a global supply chain. Even in the small businesses, you must have seen that they have uh, actually procured some metal from China, some metal from Europe, some from America. So this entire supply chain is very, very integrated. Uh, it is uh, very, very system oriented. Therefore, quality and food safety starts with the origination with the auditing of the suppliers 
to the manufacturing and in the distribution till it reaches the customer so we have to divide our system in a way that this quality in the entire chain is integrated and now uh, actually speaking if you ask me the difference between now 20 years back and now is hugely 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 different because now i see for example if i for example if i give you the example of my own uh, business in the cocoa sector now now we have even a very very technical person who are expert in cocoa butter then there are people who are very expert in cocoa powder then people who are expert in actually cocoa plant science so in different processes now only the expert people are being taken and the way the entire process is being designed it is being designed through the enterprise resource planning which we call the erp wherein each process is dependent upon its previous process for example if it goes to the customer then it will go through all the right processes under the erp that the quality checked and approved the shelf life is approved the way we have defined our system now plays a great role in the enterprise resource planning so in the system the way this industrial systems and manufacturing systems especially are changing is that each process is now dependent on the process which we have done previously and it goes through the different qualification and with the different approval process and now it starts with the demand if we have the demand from the customers now industries work on the weekly bucket basis that on a particular week what kind of the stock keeping units we are supposed to make for the customers so there then we will start with the process orders and in that process order for example if we have the 200 skus in our system for each of the sku we have defined the entire process so right from raising the process order it will go back to the manufacturing then from there it will go back to the raw material requirement and accordingly it is well in advance we actually have it on the three month rolling basis and most of the advanced industry are having like this because nobody wants to now have the inventory they want to run a way that it is right on the time to the customer as fresh as possible and it goes through all the right approval process so this enter price resource planning is something where we as a technical guy as a food professional understanding the quality at different stages try to make the system as full proof as possible for the consistency and it should be as efficient as possible to meet the deadlines of the customer then uh, one more important thing comes now the traceability which has become the part and parcel of the entire supply chain so traceability right from the farm level to the fork level is very very important and we should be able actually to now identify that which kind of the raw materials have been used in the process and at a particular time for each lot we should be able to define by that what parameters we kept what raw materials we used and they have origin from which country which farm which lot so this entire root cause analysis can be done in case if anything is found with the found wrong with the product so now the way the systems are changing the way supply chain is getting integrated is tremendous now i am telling you that when i joined then manufacturing used to be the dominant function in the entire supply chain now within the space of 20 25 years i find that manufacturing has become a very small very very small in the entire scheme of things and i think now it doesn't have more than 10% of the Uh, score in the entire hundred percent of the things. Other is the complete integrated supply chain, which has the traceable routes, not only to the raw material but to the uh, final product also. And it should be actually very time based. For example, if we need to withdraw the product, it should be time based that where all the material has gone, which warehouses 
it has been there it is very very important so traceability is now part and parcel of the uh, entire supply chain and as a food professional now we have to keep up to date up to this point that how we see our role into this so roles are changing now roles are now getting more from the back end to the front end side and i tell you now in intangibles in the business they actually account for 85% where is the tangible things tangibles means which we can see with the eyes like the plant processes utilities they have the value of 15% right now so so you can see that how the intangible things like erp traceability qfs has taken the space in the entire supply chain and as a career oriented person we should be able actually to see that where we can add the value now we are at this stage and going forward now we are we or not we but uh, in the entire world the way this industrial four revolution is coming now we will be having the light out factories not very distant in the future but it could be within the 10 15 years that we don't need any people to run the manufacturing it will run on the machine learning it will run on the artificial intelligence the work has already started because the prices of the smart sensors have come down drastically and now as a part of the entire capital expenditure projects we can now afford to bring in those technologies to save the cost to bring in the consistency to bring in the efficiency so now even the erp system is going to stay but ultimately it will give way to the some uh, other systems which we are going to bring into back into the system so i am sure that uh, it is not very boring because i am uh, speaking from the perspective of the industry and the revolution and the going forward how it is going but it may not be a very good presentation for the people specifically in other areas other than the industries okay Uh, sir i would like to mention here actually this is the most practical presentation and actually what is happening in industry and what is required and uh, that is what we all must know actually what is happening in the field the revolution in technology and everything that is happening so no doubt it's very interesting no geeta i am telling you that the way the things are moving and they are moving so fast that even i am not very technologically savvy but i still man want to maintain or to up to date with the technology now i am finding it very difficult to go with the people uh, earlier the people used to look up to the leaders which are aged people in the 50s like me or in the 60s to bring in the change in the system but now this entire system has completely reversed now the leadership is actually hiring the people from the different uh, expertise different fields and they are making them responsible to bring in the change so that is how the system is changing completely earlier it used to be the hierarchical system but it is now the completely flat system we as a person in good organizations even person at the bottom level right now can talk to the chief executive and present his views so the way the things are going are undergoing the change is very drastic very fast very disruptive therefore as a food professional or as a technical professional or a general professional it is actually in our interest that we keep pace with the technology we keep reading it we keep ourselves up to date through the different internet things because we don't have the degree or the qualifications for that more and more data is coming data science is coming so now the way we are able to take the second by second data into the system and then see the pattern pattern of the data in the entire process and nowadays now we have the alarm system also if our defined pattern is not being followed then the process then it will give the alarm to the system and will force you to see that what is wrong with the system and in 90% cases the system itself will tell you that what is the problem where is the problem so i say that as a youngsters or as a people who are fresh in the job we have to be very updated with the technological interventions now being done in the factories so that is my perspective of the industries right now the 
way the revolution is going and actually the good thing is that now india is at the forefront to lead this revolution which is called the industrial 40 revolution so in earlier three revolutions we did not participate but in this being powerhouse in the software and the networking we are playing a very good role and there are industries actually if you go and read it then you can find that which are the industries which is actually working on the machine learning artificial intelligence which are giving you the systems which can be implemented in the uh, factory so now i see in the europe also that many indians come from the india and then uh, they have the ready made systems and then they try to market it in the europe so india is not lagging behind india is leading from the front in this okay so i hope that it is interesting now i see that the qualifications for the food professionals and the choice so i have actually categorized into the two one one is the basic qualification the way the people go in the different hierarchies and second is the plus qualifications now uh, with the food technology it could be the diploma or the certificate course or the graduate or masters or anything then there are other plus qualifications actually which will help to add a huge value to the budding food professionals so here i have listed some of the it can be seen on the slide also that uh, there are people who goes along the value chain based on their experience and it is more true in american and european context than in indian, indian context because in indian context basically people are more into the degrees and diplomas but in the western world it is completely through their experience that even people from the very contractor labor he can rise up to the director level and there are a good number of the examples there so experience based qualifications if they can update themselves if they can bring in some leadership qualities so in european countries basically they are preferred to be given the promotions according or through the value chain but yes if there are people who are qualified they are preferred but at the same time they need to be updated with the latest uh, technology so we have the experience based then we have the qualification based through the masters or anything else and through some industrial specific degrees are also there some are dairy technologist some are in the milling in the brewing technology flavor packaging it could be many then there are doctors and post doctorate fellow also which is basically people always see that uh, this uh, phd or post phd they are most reserved for teaching or for the uh, research A research could be in the basic or in the industries as such but the plus qualification is very important for example with the basic qualification if you want to move into the Q qfs kind of the roles then if you do the degrees in the quality assurance which 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 helps you a lot then automations and automations is now uh, not only limited to automating the process but this automation now takes the charge of the data science and everything which can bring in the technology to the system then excellence is where quality management system or six sigma kind of the systems which brings in the razor sharp efficiency in the entire process uh, is uh, very much popular in the system then there could be degree with some industry specific ones which is available or if the person is interested into the business then they should go through the mba then it becomes a general then the other thing is the occupational safety which is recently has taken the dominant position in the entire industry so occupational safety is very 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 important then the legal uh, my friend anand sharma has uh, dealt with this legal things and ipr things in detail then there are actually degrees in the policy making where we help the government and authorities that what to bring in or what not to bring in the policy making and then there are other supply chain related courses so it is more for the qualifications that we should see as per our, as per our uh, choices or our uh, desire then i have brought in this small slide 
that uh, what could be the international opportunities if we are placed rightly in our qualification uh, things. So generally, uh, my experience is that uh, the requirement in the developed world as well as in the developing world is more in the research and development, which is basic. So it is very important to bring in the basic research into the system. Research and development could be the use of the different raw materials, alternate raw materials, could be the pre-processing of the raw material, could be the processing standardization or setting up the manufacturing systems, process optimization. So it could be anywhere which brings in either with a view to bring in the efficiency, the consistency, the completely new product uh, as per the demand. And the more important thing, this is the product innovation basically, wherein we have to cater to the demand of the people or we have to create some product which we feel it is not very visible from the customer, but the customer like it. So we have to actually take the customer senses to innovate the product and the application of your food ingredient into the different extended product portfolio is very important. Then teaching and trainings, there are various opportunities. Quality and food safety now have the dominant role in the food industry. Therefore, uh, its professionals are very demanded in the international arena. This process I have talked about, uh, this technology transfer from the research to the uh, field is very important. And this is actually this function which helps in the technology development, technology application in the manufacturing system and making the system uh, standardized and optimized. Then one is the rapid analysis, which is very important actually from the perspective that it gives you the immediate result at the back end system, especially when you are a very large supply chain and we are having the raw material from as far as 10,000 kilometers and we have to approve it. So rather than approval, when we receive the system, in the, when we receive the material in our system physically and then we approve it. Nowadays, we are looking for the technologies that within the system, we can approve it at the origin level and send it to the destination and immediately we can make use of this and the system. So it is a fast evolving field and then uh, your own businesses uh, depending on. So basically uh, the way the people go both in the government and the private sectors and some of the uh, routes I have seen is that uh, either people go attain the higher education in the developed countries and then they try to settle in there. Uh, basically, I would prefer that uh, people go to the master's and the doctorate level where there are scholarships available because at the bachelor's level, it, it becomes really costly to go and take the qualification there. Then people go actually, it's, if, uh, from the Indian perspective, if they are experts people in certain area, then there is a demand in Africa and the Middle East also. And which is good because uh, I started my international career uh, in Africa and then from Africa then I came to US and then to the Euro. So it is very much possible that if you are the expert in some field, so there are vacancies available along that. And then there are a huge number of transfers uh, from multinational companies from India to the other countries and it is actually the something we should be happy about that a lot of Indian talent is now moving outside uh, through the hierarchy, through the uh, different uh, continents and they are constantly on the move. Then government programs specifically for the government uh, employees and exchange and trainings through the other governments, through the government systems. And then if you have done some huge job in a certain area and you are visible on now on the online, you can have the direct opportunity actually to the, uh, to anyone who is interested in going, but it will depend upon the value additions. So there could be other sources is through the sponsors, through your, uh, uh, some of your family members, which, but I have not captured it because it is personal. So, Thank you for giving me this opportunity to present my viewpoint for this uh, industrial perspective. If any question from any student or anybody, so then I will be able to deal with that. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot. And uh, 
I request the participants that in case they have any query, they may shoot it in the chat box, they may type it in the chat box, otherwise also they may write in the email provided and we can guide them to serve. So thank you so much for giving us information on market demand, the opportunities, national as well as international and uh, how India is leading in all this. And the best takeaway that I liked was that uh, the core or the crux add value to the system. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, you are always there for guiding us, for being there and showing this industrial perspective at, uh, you know, it's a bird's eye view of what is actually happening in the field. So, again, heartfelt thanks to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Geeta. Now I would uh, leave because uh, I have traveled only the last night. <laughs> but I made it sure that I give my thought process to the budding students. So thank you, Deepa, once again. Thank you, uh, Geeta, once again. And then uh, I am always at your whims. Then whenever you need me, you can ask me to come. So okay. Thanks, sir. Okay. Thanks. Sir. Extremely grateful, sir. Okay. Thank you. And now we have with us our next speaker. Okay. It's ladies' time now. So it is we have with us Dr. Shalini Sagar. Currently, she is working as Associate Professor in the Department of Food Technology at Saskara Charya College of Applied Science, the University of Delhi. Dr. Segal holds a doctorate in Dairy Microbiology from NDRI Karnal. He has also a postgraduate diploma in Human Resource Management. He has tried three years of experience in the field of academics, research, as well as administration. The wonderful part is that she has been awarded the Award of Excellence in Food Technology by AATSEA Thailand and Society of Biotechnology India. Another cherry on the cake is that she has been awarded Best Teacher by State Government of Delhi India. Look at the diversity. She is, has also been Director Quality Assurance and food fortification, something that the government of India is now pushing, food fortification at Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, Government of India. She has also actively worked in Eat Right India initiative and developed the creative side you see, trans fat logo used on food labels. Wow, great, really great. And she has expertise to set up food and collapse and has also trained in good laboratory practices. Her area of interest is food safety and she is trained in laboratory quality management systems as per ISO 107025, hackup implementation, IS 22000 food safety management system and food safety and food hygiene. She also has expertise in container integrity and under good and, and she has undergone training by USFDA at their Alameda, Alameda Lab, California and USA. She has worked as National Food Safety Consultant with WHO and also undertaken projects on safety aspects of paid food, fresh produce, as well as probiotics. She is currently working in the area of probiotics. Dr. Segal has authored two books in the area of chemical and microbiological testing of food and also contributed in chapters on different areas of food microbiology and food. She has published her research work in journals of the view. She has also introduced the concept of better process control school in India for food industry professionals in collaboration with US FDA India office. Amazing. She is associated with Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India and FSCI as a trainer and resource person. 
he has also successfully coordinated the star college scheme of dbd ministry of science and technology government of india she did that at her college her karm bhumi and currently she is currently sorry, currently she is a member of working group for the national commission of rakshit khadya abhiyan by cii and member steering committee of cii hul initiative on food safety science she is also a trained online Uh, she is also trained in the online educational delivery models like MOOC as well as LM. A wonderful and very inspiring CV, ma'am. Thank you so much for being with us. The stage is all yours. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Geeta. Thank you so much for your kind words. Actually, what all has been said has been part of the journey for the last twenty-five years, which I have been doing. And right at the onset, I would like to thank. Wells Institute, Dr. Prakash, and Mayor Chan Bahajan College, DAV College, Chandigarh, Dr. Geeta Mehra, who invited me and gave me this platform to interact with all of you. So I'm thankful for the opportunity, and I'm also thankful to the people who are going to listen to me for next few minutes. Today, I'm not going to talk on something very, very, you know, specific to my core area, like Dr. Geeta has already introduced. I am. by training a food microbiologist and by passion i am a food safety person but today being a teacher i am taking you in a different direction and we are going to talk about the career opportunities how we need to talk about career for food technologist and it is very very really relevant to the seminar theme which is happening today we have to feed the zillions and when you have to feed the zillions you have you should have the right kind of manpower so i'll i'll be taking you along with me on a topic and let's see how much we get it at the end of the day and i'm also thankful to my earlier speakers who have already set the stage for me so my take off is much much easier you know so i'll be sharing my presentation now I hope it is visible to one and all, Dr. Geeta. Can you give me an indicator? Yes, ma'am. Is it visible? Thank you. Thank you so much. So the topic, carrier machinations in food. We are going to talk something which is going to help all of us and anybody who is currently a student, a person who is working, and a person like me who has spent like two decades, more than two decades in this industry or in this field. now why not career opportunities in food why are we saying machinations it's very important with the changing time with the changing scenario we should understand the title before we go ahead with the talk machinations if you look the word it means a plot a scheme a design yes we do not need opportunities along with the opportunities we also need a design a plot to understand where we are heading in this field of food and if you see the title it is carrier machinations in food but gradually i'll be taking you into food technology because that is a theme of the seminar which we are attending now when we talk about food science food technology whenever i am part of a admission process and i am you know dealing with students their parents their guardians most of the time i find that there is lots of confusion happening what is food science what is food technology and people keep on repeatedly uh, keep saying ma'am is it home science ma'am is it only nutrition is it dietetics so my first myth breaking thing statement is yes food technology and can pass is all it includes everything but food science is not only home economics it's not only nutrition and it is not about cooking right so this is the myth most of the time when people they come to us for admission with the children they are pretty unaware where are they heading you know so i would like to say one thing most of the people who come to these courses most it's a plan b for them 
they were heading in some other direction but food technology happened to them and they joined this course now when we talk about food science as such it's a very vast field and we are talking about all the aspects here be it the chemistry be it the bio biochemistry nutrition microbiology engineering why because we need to solve the real problems which are associated with the food system and this food system is very very complex and very dynamic right so this makes the food science as a subject very challenging keeps on changing you know there are always new things coming in then what about food technology is application is the applied part of food science we are using this food science for what purposes selection preservation processing packaging distribution and also to make sure that the food is safe so food technology is a diverse fields brought together under one umbrella when you talk about a food technologist he can have multiple roles because you are trained in multiple fields you are taught various papers various disciplines under this course as such now before finding out do we have a career path in this we should be very very positive about our selection of the field where we are going to work in the long run yes is it a sunrise sector for our country i totally vouch for it yes it is why because we have zillions to feed we have one of the biggest populations in the world so we need to give them food and when you talk about food not all food comes with a very long shelf life majority of it is perishable so you need to process food so this is the first point yes food but processed food second point india our country is a vast edible land there are so many types of agriculture produce and once you have this kind of a basket various types of things are there you need more technology and once you want you want to convert that raw material into product you need people you need manpower so definitely there is a scope in this sector then the country is blessed with various diverse agro climatic conditions each you can have apples in himachal you can have cashews down south right so our entire profiling of the country is diverse is multiple right that means it creates more opportunities for us to work right then change in lifestyle this is a global factor the lifestyle is changing throughout the globe and once the lifestyle is changing i think we are all moving towards more processed food because we are running short of time we are running short of time in we are busy in pursuing our careers we are pursue, uh, busy in traveling you know so the entire thing is you know changing and although the home cooked food is the best but yes now there is space on the shelf for the processed food if that space is there this means you have opportunities to work in this particular field when i look at my country india you can see this is the latest data which has come from the report uh, the kpmg report may 2021 so we are first in milk right we are first in milk production because this will give you a birds eye view where all we can work where all the opportunities are there we are first in pulses we are second in rice we are second in wheat we also have you know a fifth position in meat processing we are first in sugar we are also second in tea so you can very well see this ranking fruits and vegetables we are second now when you see this ranking it really matters it matters me because we are producing so much of material which is needed by us also and we if we have in excess we can send it to other countries so the processing or the technology is needed right to maintain this position and to generate revenue 
right? To give money to the economy of our country. Now these are few things which will give you a very, very positive feel. You can see, if we see India, and these are the various production centers for food processing, segment-wise analysis has been done. So you can see in Dairi, in Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, MP, Gujarat, Andhra, Andhra, and we have so many things. We are having many things which are happening across, right? So when we talk about so many you know, factors which are there all around us, it's very, very important to understand if these opportunities are all around India. You can see each and every part of India. This means, yes, there's hope. There are jo jobs. We need to get trained and we need to have the right design, the right plot to be successful as a food technologist. Then we talk about the various efforts which are being taken by the government. So you can see there are mega food parks, 17 of them are already up and running. We have various export zones. We are having the cold chain projects. Very, very important thing which is happening in India is the cold chain because uh, a large chunk of the food produced is spoiled, right? So it, the cold chain is very, very important. Then we are having many food processing clusters which are being created. And again, across the country, it's uniform. It's not like that, that is only in down north or only in south west, northeast, you can see even in the uh, area northeast where, you know, the terrain is tough, you know, at times we are having, the government is putting efforts, right? Why, if all this is happening, yes, it's creating more job opportunities for all of us. Now, the career scope, it gives the highest employment in the country. Why? Because it's not giving you direct employment, it is also giving you opportunities to various sectors like agriculture, right? So there's a big connect between agriculture and food processing. Both cannot thrive without one another. Then in the coming years, there will be a lot of demand on healthy, safe food products. You can right now see due to the post-COVID scenario, everybody is talking about immunity. We are talking about neuro booster foods, right? So there were so many foods which we have been taking earlier also, but now they have taken the center stage. They are right. The focus has gone back into the immuno boosting food, right? So when we talk about food technology, it's a multifaceted field. You are not only talking about chemistry. You are not talking about microbiology. You are talking how food is processed, how it changes, how we need to pack it, pack it and how we need to send it to the consumer. So the entire chain is very, very diverse. There are many stakeholders which are part of this and they need to be trained. You need to have certain technologies even at the farm level. Then gradually add the processor. And finally, when it comes to the consumer, it should be the right thing, the right label. So the packaging plays a very critical role when you talk about the processed food industry. And recently, and nowadays, the law is being drafted about the labels, the front of the lab, uh, front of the label on the packs is being drafted, worked into. So when we talk about food technology, I will start. I am very very positive. Yes, good field. It is a food. It's a field with potential. How? You can see what vast diversification is there. You can talk about quality assurance. You can talk about labeling, packaging. You can evaluate the product. You can do for product analysis. You can even study the, the needs in the industry. What does the industry need, right? You can work into product development. You can make new products, very important. Because each one of us is a consumer. We get saturated. So you need new products coming up and about. And you need people who are in the market research people who are in the market research, right? So we need, you can see it's an entire gamut and the gamut is very, very vast. It's very, very this thing, right? So when we talk about this thing, this means opportunity in each field, in each branch. When we talk about this, 
particular field, you know, expertise, three core areas, up till now, three core areas, chemistry, biology, engineering. So you can talk about, you know, analytical chemistry, flavor chemistry, physical, lipid, toxicology. Very, very important taking, uh, it's like taking a front stage now, food quality. When you look at the biology, food microbiology, biotechnology, nutrigenomics, interesting field, a very upcoming field. When you talk about engineering, there are people who can have expertise in rheology, extrusion. You can have packaging experts. You can have people who are working on membrane technology. There are people who are introducing new technologies. Mr. Singh, prior to my this thing lecture, Mr. Uh, K.P. Tutoria, I think, sir, was talking about new technologies. Yes, it makes a difference. You have to adapt. You have to new, know the new technology. So this is very, very important. These are the core areas. These are the strength areas for any good technologies. Now, when you have expertise or you have the core expertise, what kind of jobs are available? This question is very often asked at various platforms, especially the students, especially the final year students you are heading out. They are always you know, asking this question, what kind of jobs are there? Multiple, many, takes it. They are all different. They are all different, right? So when you have so many paths, so you need to plot, you need to design your career as a food technologist. And what should you be doing? That is a question. So when you do a degree in food science, multiple things are flashing on the screen. You can be in marketing, you can be in sales, you can be in the supply chain, you can be a sensory and consumer scientist, you can be a hygienist, you can be a regulatory manager, you can be a food safety manager, you can be a product developer, right? So you can see that when you look at this range, such a vast range, yet people complain, we don't get jobs, we do not get jobs, we do not get paid the right amount. So we'll be coming to those questions also. So when you talk about these job opportunities, yes, you have job opportunities in various parts of processing industry. It can be canning, dairy and food processing. Dairy is one of the most organized sectors in our country. Packaging, frozen food, refrigeration, thermo processing. And apart from that, subsectors. You can head to fruits and vegetable processing. You can be working only in fisheries. You can be working in milk and milk products, meat and poultry. You can work in beverage segment. That's also part of it. You can only work in soft drinks. You can work in grain processing. Yes, we produce so much of wheat, right? Why not enter that field? Because the opportunity will be there. Then consumer goods. The entire food industry is around the consumer. New products for the consumer, new technology for the consumer. So consumer is the king here in true sense. Because whenever we are making a product, whenever we are putting the person in mind who's going to consume it, right? All the economics are around the consumer. So we can have confectionaries, we can have chocolates, we can have soya-based products. And nowadays you will see lots of work is happening on the plant-based products. We are all shifting from the animal foods gradually into the plant foods. Mineral water, high protein foods, you can see the supplement market. It's, it's just mushroomed in last few years, right? Soft beverages, then non-alcoholic fruit beverages, uh, lots of probiotic drinks, you know, functional drinks which are there in the market. More products means more opportunity. Now, yes, we are all sure by seeing the last few slides, lots of opportunities are there. But do we have challenges? Yes, we do have challenges. So we need to think and plan new. That's the first word. We need to analyze our strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. You must be wondering what threats is she talking about? 
I am just looking for a job in food industry. So, up till now, whenever I used to talk to people, every time, there were three categories. When you talk about a food technologist, it can be processing. You are working in the processing. You are a shop floor manager. You can work in the quality lab. Right? You can work as an analyst. Or you can work in R&D labs, which are there with multinational firms, not with the basic uh, food industry. Now, before I take you further, all these three things which are written on the screen, they require different strengths. Processing. You need to know about the process. You need to know about the machinery. Right? Quality analyst or quality. You need to know about the product. You need to know about the analysis part of it. Analytical skills, right? Now coming to R&D. You need not know about the machinery part, but yes, you should know about the process part. You should know in detail the product part. You should be the strongest on the product component, how the product can be modified, how it can be converted, reworked, right? So with these three, although these were the only three areas, but I feel each and every person who goes into this field needs to have different strengths. Now, threat. Processing. You're not the only one. There are so many agriculture engineers. There are so many engineers who can work in that line. Quality. Many of you who go to the industry, you will realize that in the labs, in the quality analysis, you have chemists working. You have plain microbiologists having only microbiology degree working, right? So that is the threat. You have to compete with those people, right? Because they also have the same core strength as you. R&D. Yes, for R&D, you cannot be a UG or a PG person. You should have a doctorate, right? So wherever you go, whichever area you select, you need to focus. What are your strengths and what are the areas where you can be, you know, targeting your career graph or your career path. Now, I will definitely use the word challenging sector. Yes, be prepared. It's just, you are working in processing. You have to interact with the workers. You have to, right? Quality. Be prepared to be cooped inside a lab throughout the day and just doing the analysis. R&D, you have pressure to introduce a new product, right? So it's a very, very challenging sector. You can work in these three areas. Challenges are there. The timings, the interaction, handling the manpower, everything is there. So be prepared, right? Now, when you look at these three, my advice to the students who are budding food technologists, that please think out of these three boxes. Think new. Plan new. What, what is this? What do, what do I mean by it? Now, when you talk about new expertise, there are changing needs, right? What are those changing needs? We are getting into nanotechnology. So much of material science is coming. We are talking about lots of micro devices. Sir, right now, I was talking about the sensors, right? Automation, sensors, which is into the play right now. Trends, we have to find out the trends. The non-thermal processing, biomarkers for wellness, proteomics, bioinformatics. Only one week back, one of my students, an undergrad student, he asked me, ma'am, should I take a course in bioinformatics? I told him, not the right time. Yes, but not at this point. You have the fundamentals of food in place and then you go one step higher. Food chemistry. Lots of work is happening in functional food areas. We are getting new foods, right? Which are totally new. Fat mimetics, for example. Lots of food. Then food biotechnology. We are function working on the functionality of the food. If you see now, usually there was a saying that you are what you eat. Now if you see, 
if you see the trend across the globe, you are what you digest, right? It's not what you're taking inside, but how much is being taken up by your body. So that is important, the food functionality, how it will be absorbed better by your body. How much is being taken in and it is giving you nutrition in two sense. That is important. Then microbial, molecular biology, food safety, very important field, new pathogens coming in, new rapid testing things. Uh, you can see we are working lots at FSSI into RAFT. You can just go and see. So these are the rapid analytical techniques which are there. Because in food industries, you cannot wait for 12 hours to process a product. Right? You need quick results. So rapid analysis is a very interesting field, very challenging field. You also need extension specialists. Okay, there is knowledge, but you need people who spread it around. Why not you? You are a person who knows all about food technology. You are the best to talk about it, to take it to various levels. And you will understand what needs to be told to a worker, to a manager, or to a CEO of a company, right? Because your take-off points are going to be different for all people. Right? So, why not you? Why can't you work as an extension specialist? You can. Definitely you can. So, when you look at the new expertise which is needed, so we can think of certain job opportunities which are different, which will give you opportunities in various related and new fields. Now, combinations, do they work? Yes. For a food technologies, it really works. Wonder. Food technology with the MBA. You look at MBA in every business. You can look at IMA, uh, IM, most of the IMs, uh, IRMA. You can do an MBA even to food related field or even not, but it's a good combination for you. Then why not food technology with hotel management? It's a good combination. You are actually needed. You are needed there, right? Then, the third one, food safety management, FSMS. Lots of jobs. Lots of jobs. This is this has actually for last decade, you, you can be a food auditor, right? You can be a food safety officer. You can work in different multinationals and public sector uh, companies. You can also have a degree, you can combine your degree with the intellectual property, right? I think it's been covered in the morning, IPR, right? So why not? Why not do it? The combinations, they will give you more opportunities. Just being a plain BSc, MSc or a BTEC is not going to work. It's not going to work in the changing times. You have to strengthen your resume. Why not a law degree? A very good combination. Food technology. You hardly have people in food who are doing food regulations. We need people who know about the food and who know about the law. So that combinations are going to work wonders. And wonders in terms of your career design. How you move. Right? So this is very, very important for each one of you who is listening or who will be listening later that you have to strengthen your core strengths. You have to add more to it so that your job market is more lucrative. You get more opportunities. Now, where can you go? Many places. You can work with food processors. You can work with ingredient manufacturers, suppliers. You can work with in the food service industry. You can work in the testing labs. You can be in the academia, you can be in the food safety, packaging, you can be working with the government sector, which I'm going to highlight. Dr. Geeta told me to cover that for you guys, so I'm going to do that. You can work in non-government organizations, you can work with NGOs, you can work with international organizations, and various food industries and corporations, right? Now, why not a procurement manager? Yes. Why not a job in sales? You'll Look at your own strength. If you are a people's person, 
I'm not talking about a sales job in any shop or something. I'm talking about business, fact, business to business, B to B. Good opportunity. You can be a procurement person, right? In food service, I am not telling you to stand there and serve. I am telling you to maintain the food safety. Implement the food safety management systems for a food service establishment. Testing lab. Yes, you can start as an analyst. You can go to the manager level. You can go to the director level. Academia. Yes, you need a PhD degree. This journey is pretty long, but yes, there are opportunities and very, very important job because if you have to create the workforce, you need teachers, right? So once the teachers are not there, you know, we cannot have the youngsters. We cannot give the manpower, the future manpower. So academy are very important. Food safety. Up till now, India was a country which was talking about food security always, you know. Food for all, food for all. But now, the mantra is different from one decade. It is safe food for all. Who will make the food safe? You, me. People who talk about food, people who know about food, right? You cannot have food safety without having the knowledge of food. You need to understand how complex the food system is. Then only you can make it safe, right? Packaging. Very interesting field. You can get into food packaging or you can also just move into packaging also. Because you will see a sea change is happening in packaging. Smart packaging. Right? So much of intelligent packaging. A uh, pack which speaks itself whether food is right or wrong. Pretty interesting. Then the government I'm going to take up. No, no NGOs. There are many NGOs with, which are working in the area of food. Especially saving food. Lots of, uh, lots of thing is there on food sustainability. We have to stop the food. If you want to give uh, stop the food wastage. If we want to give food to all, we waste so much of food, right? Many NGOs are working. You can do better. You can actually save food. And you can divert it to the people who actually need food, right? International organizations, which are like World Bank, UN, FAO, you have opportunities there, but you should have experience. And most of these jobs are consulting jobs and their project based jobs right so this can be also looked into you can start doing your internship uh, there are many internship posts which keep coming right so you can do the internship with these organizations and you can gradually get into the system now the jobs in government sector yes this is the common mindset that a government job is more secure right not you, but for your parents. This is a mindset, you know, which works. So, yes, there are jobs. There are academic jobs. You can go to college. You can teach in colleges, universities. You can go to institutes which are established by Ministry of Food Processing Industry. Recently, the Tanjavur Institute has been named as Nifton 2. You have scientist jobs, ICR. Many scientist jobs are there. You can be a patent examiner. You can have a government job and you can visit the site which is there and you can actually see the courses and you can be looking into opportunities like this. Actually, we need people who can work for the food patents. Very few people who are, you know, having a knowledge of food are into this. Into ASRB, this is Agriculture Scientist Recruitment Board. Right? So you can find the jobs here, administrative post, but this is later on. All these jobs which I am showing here, they will require experience, they will require a higher academic qualification to work in. Right? So this is a flip side. You have to have a longer journey to reach these posts or these jobs. The other jobs in the government sector, which you can go right after your BTEC or your MSc or after your MTEC, are the ones which are offered by Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, by the State Public Service Commission or the states. They hire the food safety officers through it. The Department of Food Safety and Health also takes time to time people who are coming from a foods background. Food Corporation of India, many people are working here. You start with the assistant manager post. NABAT is a bank. 
right? So you might be uh, thinking, what to do in a bank? They hire food technologists to study the proposals, the project proposals which are coming for loans, people who want to establish their own industries, right? So you are a specialist for the bank also, bark scientists. They're working in food processing. There are many scientists who are working. They, in fact, they have a department of food technology. So you can be a scientist in this department also. This Bureau of Indian Standards. You can be a technical officer there. You can be a scientist. I can just, I'll just show the screenshots of few, you know, ads which I have captured from various sites telling you or informing you that these are also the career designs which you can have. This, it comes under the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, right? You can have the post of scientist. You can see what they want, a bachelor's degree in engineering or technology, right? You should also have a Gates book. It was earlier not there, but now they have added this. So you can be a scientist. You can be a technical assistant in the lab, right? Again, you have an online uh, exam for it and you have a skill and a practical test. You can be a food safety officer. This can be via FSSAI and it can be via the state public service commission. We can have centrally, but each state has food safety officers. Each state has, right? So this is one opportunity you can, you know, take care of. Then you can be working at FSCI, the central headquarter, right? At Delhi or at their four sub headquarters, zonal quarters, right? So you can be assistant director, you can be assistant director technical, you can also be a technical officer, right? And you can be a central food safety officer. There are two types of opportunities here. One is a state food officer and other is a central food safety officer, right? So all across all in all states, you have opportunity to be a food safety professional or a food safety officer. Then I was talking about NABAT. So you can see it's a post of officers, grade A. And you can see it is usually in RDBS, that is your Rural Development Banking Services. And the area is food slash dairy processing. You can head there also. This is one more. Then you have Institute of Banking Personal Selection, I. PPS. So there also there is a vacancy for specialist officers. You can be agricultural field officer. You should have a degree in food science, technology, dairy technology. Apart from this, you can also part work in policy making. You can work in army. You can be a, a lecturer in army, right? if you know about food technology because army really banks on food so you have opportunities in the armed forces also to work now we have been just talking about the stereotypical roles which were there but now with the new generation we are getting a newer job market so there are many new jobs new age jobs which are coming up which are there which were earlier not there right probably when i was a student they were not there but now they exist right what are they you should be knowing about them also new age jobs you can be a craft bureau there are people who are into brewing and you can see there are many types of brews which are being developed, various types of combinations which are being used, right? So you have uh, new outlets, restaurants, so craft bureau, you have to do a course and you can join apart food, after food technology, right? Food lawyer, I already told you, lots of scope in policy making, regulations, why not a law? You can just, after doing a food tech degree, follow it up by law. It's a good combination. Food stylists, people who are 
a food person and they love to photograph why not be a food stylist mycologist lots of money is there in the mycology harvesting mushrooms why not you why not why a layman should be talking about mushroom why not a food technologist talking about mushrooms we are much more qualified to talk about it and you will understand it much better urban farmer you see there are many people who are into farming now even organic farming people why not why not do it these are the niche fields where you can go job industry job resources lots of work you can be the person you can be the consultant who will connect the workforce with the job demand you can do it there are many more many channels which have come up now that they offer you jobs in the food industry or they connect you they provide information to the industry what they need right why not you food blogger talk about food write about food you will be able to write about food better you have been taught food for 3 years or 4 years why not you and why i am talking about all this because yes you have to break the mold you have to have new opportunities you have to have a plan and please understand if it's a niche field there will be less of competition there will be less people but you need more you need more guts you need the risk taking capacity to be here right so this is i just snip the slide these are the data of some people who are bloggers who are on the who are making use of internet of things right iot and they are making money so you can visit these sites edible garden nagalakshmi's right then you have karandua right then you have swati suchitra so all these people they are making money by food through food so when you are trained in food why not you if you have a passion about the food why not do it right so these people they themselves they are brands in themselves they've established themselves right so this is another area where you can walk in you can have a career plotting in this direction also now for any career it's be be a food technologist be it be a engineer be it be any computer you need all those things right and i feel when you start the job you might not be paid more right do not start your first job just for the sake of money right please enter the job market with the feeling that you are there to learn gradually step by step you will get more and more right you need to be a person who learns who is hard working right you have to build right in the beginning if you see the photograph steps are there career is all about taking small steps learning and making it taking the leap right so taking the leap leap of faith and trying to build around your core strengths this is not the time or the age to just sit with your single degree you will be stuck at one ladder room one step of the ladder you will not be going to top of it so you have to learn sometimes you have to even all learn what you have learned earlier to me to be receptive to the new change which is happening and yes with the covid pandemic around lots of change is happening the food industry is impacted no doubt but yes we are not going to stop eating food so there will be always opportunity to work in the food industry and with this kind of a uh, pandemic around us you will see that you need to get into more analytical part analytics data analytics ai right so why not do courses like this which will predict the trend what people are having or what people are going to have after 5 years or within next 4 years or 5 years right so all this is going to really help and this is a new thing this is a new mantra that you need to adapt and you have to learn and 
it was very well said earlier now it is not like that that it's there is no steps in the chain it's a uniform thing if you have the right knowledge if you have the right skills you can rise higher you can definitely rise higher you need not be a assistant manager to be a manager or to be a director you should have a good resume and at the end of the day at the end of the talk i know i'm keeping you away from the food but it's your future take the most of it you're always welcome for any queries my email id was given right in the beginning is shalini segal 72 at the rate gmail.com you can google and you can always come back with to me with queries thank you so much for listening dr geeta to you now Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks a lot. It was a wonderful session, and I must say that the best teacher award that was bestowed on you was really it was very well deserved. And the Thank way you. This, <laughs> the way this hand holding was done throughout the entire session for the students, taking them step by step to chart their career plan, growth plan. that is really worth emulating thank you so much ma'am and the best takeaway was it is important to earn learn to learn thank you so much for gracing the occasion for being with us for giving your wisdom to us thanks a lot ma'am thank you thank you dr geeta and dr prakash for giving this opportunity and you took me out from the my world of microbes which i inhibit most of the time you know microbes whom i keep talking so this was something which i do in the classroom you did gave me the platform thank you so much dr geeta wishing all the very best for your success of this seminar thank you bye bye all the queries all the queries can be sent if students have any questions i love to answer them sure sure thank you madam thanks a lot and now uh, the most important part that we are looking for forward to the lunch break so we can all meet again at uh, quarter to 2 right so it is great that we are usually in all the seminars we get delayed but see our speakers are so on dot on point that at 108 we are free so i request you all to please rejoin at 1:45 pm so that we can start again at 2 pm thank you so much for being with us thank you so much to madam thank you so much all the faculty members and the participants see you again at 1:45 pm thank you